hey everybody, James here from Artificial Entertainment, and we are back with some more Unreal Engine 5 tutorials. And in this one, we're looking at how to be able to set up a really nice dynamic interaction system that you can use to be able to interact with anything in your game using a very nice line tray system. So let's go take a look. Alright, so I have here a fresh project. The only thing I've done is added in a few props, and this is just for the purposes of showing you how uh, the interaction system is going to work when trying to interact with different things. Now, there's two things that really make this whole system work. The first one is going to be the line tray system that detects the interactable objects. The second one is going to be the interaction uh, blueprint interface itself. Now, this blueprint interface is going to be the thing that actually communicates between our character and all the actor objects that we're placing within the world. So before we do anything else, let's go ahead and make that interface. And what we're going to do is we're going to right click, go to blueprints, and then we're going to click on blueprint interface. Alright, we're just going to name this Interaction Interface. Now, once you've got it named, go ahead and open it up. Alright, we'll maximize this, and we're going to rename the function here. So, we're just going to highlight it, and then press F2, and we're going to name it Interact. So, once we press Enter, you'll see that the name of the function also changes. We're not going to add any inputs or outputs, we're just going to leave this as is. So, we'll compile, and then save. So, now that we have our Blueprint Interface, now we have to go and create our Line Trace system that'll be the detection for if we are within uh, range to actually interact with something. So let's go to our character's blueprint. So for me, that's going to be third person, blueprints, BP third person character. And then we'll go ahead and open that up. We'll pull up the event graph here. So now before we can actually start putting the code in here, we're going to want to add an input, something that'll make it so that way our line trace will work properly. You can also just run it off of an event tick function if you would like. However, I don't recommend it just because it can make your game very load heavy. I recommend doing it this way instead. So what we're going to do is go to edit, project settings, and then we're going to go to engine, and then we're going to look for input. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the action mappings and we're going to add a new action mapping and we're just going to call it detect object. And then we're going to add a few um, keys here to be able to actually control this event. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have it set up so that way if mouse X and mouse Y. What this means is that if our mouse moves in any direction, it's going to call this event. Now we also want to make sure to go ahead and add two more mappings here, so this way we have four after we have the mouse X and mouse Y. This way we can press the little keyboard icon here, and we can go W, A, S, and D. So this way, anytime the character looks around or moves around, this event will be called. And this is just again, just so that we have a nice solid foundation for calling our detection system. Now we're also going to want to make a custom trace channel to be able to detect and make sure that we're obviously detecting the right objects. So what we're going to do is go to Engine, Collision, and we're going to go to Trace Channels, and we're going to add a new trace channel. What we're going to call is an Interactable Object Trace. And then the default response is going to be Ignore, and we'll click Accept. So this way now we have a trace channel as well as the inputs. All right, so we're going to go ahead and close this down, go back to our character's blueprint here. Now we can call that Detect Object. So we have input, action events, detect object. So we're going to zoom in here, and you can see we have pressed and released. And what we're going to do is, this is going to be where we set up our line trace. So what we're going to do is, off of pressed, we're going to actually, instead of a line trace, we're going to do a sphere trace. So we're going to get sphere trace by channel. Now this is, I prefer to use sphere traces when using interaction detection because it gives you more room for error. Line traces generally tend to be very pinpointed and can often miss the object that the character or the player is trying to look at. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag this off and we're going to start just by setting up a very basic line trace system. And we're going to tweak it later, but we'll start with the very basic version. So what we're going to do is right click and we're going to get actor location. We're also going to get actor rotation. Now I'm not going to go over too much about the line trace system in this video because I do have a video going back over um, how to be able to set these up and what these values mean and things like that. So if you're not sure how to do a line trace, um, I'll leave the link to the video at the bottom of the description here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the get actor location and we're going to plug it right into the start node. We're going to take the get actor rotation, pull off, and we're going to get the forward vector. Now from the forward vector, we're going to pull off and we're going to get a multiply. Because this way we're multiplying by the forward vector, and then we're just going to right click on the struct pin, convert it to a float single precision. And I'm going to set this value to something around 300. So this is going to be the distance that is going to be for your detection system. So make sure you set this value appropriately and just play around with it, whatever works well for you. 
So now what we're gonna do is off of the get actor location, return value here, we're gonna pull off and we're gonna put an add node in there. And then we're gonna plug the struct pin of this multiply into the bottom of the add node and then the output of the add node into the end. And then we're gonna take the trace channel and we're gonna set it to our interactable object trace and our draw debug type is gonna be set to for duration. Now we have to do a couple more things to this trace but we are almost done. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a branch with B and left click and we're going to hook it up like this, and we're going to take the return value and hook this up into the condition. Then we're also going to take the out hit, and we're going to break that hit result. So we're going to drop down the menu here, and the hit actor component is the main thing that we're looking for. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull off of hit actor, and we're going to look for does implement interface. And this is just to check to make sure that it has the proper interface for what you're trying to do. Now the reason why this can be important is that if you have an object that might do different things based off of the interface or what's happening in the moment, you can always use different uh, checks to be able to make sure it's using the proper interface. So if you have one system that's just checking to make sure that whatever interface it has, it's using, but also making sure that it's only interacting things with an interface, this is how you would use that and just have it set up with branch conditions. So what we're going to do is we're going to add another branch with B and left click, hook up the true into the branch here, and then we're gonna take this condition and hook this up from the return value of does implement interface. Now we also wanna make sure that the interface that we have selected is for the interact. So we're gonna go interaction interface. Now what we're gonna do is off of true, this is where we actually have to add our interface into our character blueprint now, because this is where we're actually gonna call some information. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is, while still in your character's blueprint, if you go to class settings, so up here you got class defaults and class settings. With class settings selected, your details panels is going to change. What you can do is if you go down to interfaces, and if you click on add, type in interact or whatever you named your interface, and as you can see here, we have interaction interface. So now it's been added under the interfaces section of my blueprint. So now what we're gonna do though, is we're going to take the hit actor we're going to drag it off and promote it to a variable, and we're going to save this as interactable object. So this is going to be the actor value for the interactable object, and it's going to set this value right at the end. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to make an object for us to be able to interact with as well. And I have a couple of props here that I have set up. So the first one is just a simple door, um, and we're going to go ahead and use this and create a quick blueprint to be able to use on it. So we're going to right click blueprint class and we want to make sure that we set these to actor types because realistically the interaction system is going to work best with actor types because realistically we're looking for an actor to be able to save that information. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this and name this door and then we're going to open this up. We're going to go to the components tab. We're going to add, we're going to add a skeletal mesh because my door is a skeletal mesh and then I'm just gonna rename it and we're gonna add in exit door. I'm just gonna bring it down so that way it's a little bit more appropriate to floor level and then boom, just like that. Now there are a couple of things that we wanna make sure to do. The first thing is that we wanna make sure our interface is on this blueprint because we check to make sure that anything we're gonna interact with, we have to make sure it has that interface. So again, we're just gonna to go to class settings, interfaces, type in interact, and then we're gonna click on the interaction interface. All right, so now we just have to make sure to add in the custom trace channel to this blueprint because we also want to make sure that it's uh, going to be detecting this particular blueprint because of the way that we've set up our system. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the door section here, go to the search bar and type in collision. And you'll see that right now the collision presets is set to no collision. So I'm going to change that. We go to the drop down and then I'm also going to make sure that it's set to custom, collision enabled, so query and physics. I'm going to keep it as world static, but I'm going to make sure to block the interactable object trace. This way, this object is going to be something that our trace is actually going to detect. So we'll compile and save. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make a quick key that we can use to be able to actually call this event. Now you can call, so the way that you would call the event, like if you just want to make it so that way when you walk up to something, it's going to actually interact with it. What you can do is off of the interact object uh, variable that's being set, you can just type in interact and you want to make sure you call this one interact message. The reason why is because this one's going to give you the actor target value that you can then plug in. So it knows to run the interaction um, interface on that particular object. So you can instance it across multiple versions of itself in your game. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what this would do with the door if I you know, had it set up uh, to open up. So we'll go ahead and add that really quickly. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull up the event graph here. 
and we're going to go to our blueprint section here. You can see under interfaces we have this interact, so if we double click on this, we'll actually get an event that we can call anytime that our interaction event is called in our character blueprint. So that's what this message is. This message is saying that I want to use the interaction interface, but the target is going to be whatever we are interacting with with our line trace system. So let's go back to the door, and what we're going to do is off of event interact, I'm going to add a do once node so this way it doesn't play it over and over again. And off of completed, I'm going to go to play animation. Now this is a cheap way that you can do animations, um, also opening of doors. So if you have a door skeleton and you just do a quick animation, so like for example, open up my skeleton here. Um, if you go and you set up a bone that would be right where the hinge would be, you can then just set up an opening and closing animation, just record it, or an opening animation. The closing, eh, it's not so great, but the opening, if you just wanted to open once, works great, record it, and then you can use that. And that's actually what we're using here, so we're just going to go door open right here, and then boom, that's all. So we're going to compile and save, and then we'll go ahead and drag our door into our blue, or into our world. So we'll drag this in and we'll put it right about where our character is. But I'm going to rotate it so that way the handle is facing towards our character. So if I click on play, you'll see we have a trace coming from our character. If I walk forward, immediately as soon as the trace hits, the door is opening. So this is the problem with this particular system is that it's not realistically going to make it so that way you can fine tune things. However, making one change will change everything. So we're going to go to the edit section, and we're going to go to project settings, and we're going to go down to the inputs to be able to add one additional action mapping. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this action mapping, and we're going to name it interact. So this is going to be the actual key we're going to use when we want to interact with something. And for here, I'll just put E, because that's a pretty standard key, I feel. And what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and close that, and then we're going to bring up our character's blueprint. Now what we're going to do is we're going to detach interact here and we're going to bring it down so this way we can call this in a different way. And we're going to right click and look for interact and we're going to look for the input action events interact. Now from here we're going to take the press and we're going to plug it into the interact section and then this uh, variable that we've made here we can get it and then plug it right into the target so it's performing the same function like it did up above however now we're calling it when we want to instead of having it being called on its own. So if I compile and save, and then we hit play, I can go ahead and walk up to the door, and you'll see it's not doing anything, but the second I press E, it'll go ahead and it'll open. So this allows me to be able to interact on command, but however, it's still making it so that way I can get a nice trace. And as you see, every time I move my mouse, or every time I move around, it calls the event. So it's pretty nice the way it's calling everything appropriately. Now let's take a look, as you can see here, the uh, line trace, when it's coming from the character, it's coming straight out. You know, if you want it to look down at something, that's that's not really going to work, right? That's It's just not going to function properly. So what we want to do, though, is we want to try and see if we can create a system that will allow us to be able to use the character's head and camera position to be able to look around, look down, and things like that. The easiest way to do this is to go to the BP third person character, go to the components tab and the viewport. And then if we click on add and look for arrow, we'll add this in and we're going to take it and make sure that it's parented to the follow camera. Now from here, we can take it and we're going to drag it up so it's right about at eye level. Now it doesn't have to be perfect, you just want it within reason. I'm going to turn off the snapping as well, so this way I can try and get it in a better position. Now once that's there, one other thing that I do recommend is because I have always found that the camera position is a little off. So I like to put it in closer and bring it up a little higher and then push the arrow to the head position after. So this way the, uh, the arrow doesn't actually move from the head's position like it just did. But this way the camera's position is a little closer to the character and I feel like it just feels a little more natural to me. So what we can do though is now that we have that arrow and it's parented to our follow camera, we can actually use its position and rotation for our line trace. So let's go ahead, we're going to delete the get actor location and rotation, and instead we're going to go to our blueprint here, or I'm sorry, our components tab here, and we're going to drag in our arrow, and we're going to get world rotation, and we're also going to get world location as well. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take these and plug these back up into the nodes that we disconnected from. Because this way, it's going to basically, rather than using the character's position, it's going to use this arrow's rotation and location using the same 300 value. 
Now another thing that I would recommend looking into is the radius factor here is very useful. As you saw, it's more like a line trace happening right now, but what I like to do is crank this up to something like 25. And the reason why I like such a high number is because it allows a lot of room for error when interacting with the world. Because if you look, oh, looks like I... Ah, so always make sure to plug uh, that world location back into the start value. I could edit that out, but I felt like that was funny, so I'm going to keep that in. All right, so now if we hit play, though, you'll see now the line trace is happening from his head, and we can look down, we can look around. Everything is happening exactly the way it should. And if we're not moving, like if I'm not pressing any keys, there's no trace happening. And this is the reason why I recommend doing it this way, because you'll still be able to get the same system just without having to worry about it happening when you're not doing anything. When the character isn't playing, you don't still have line traces going every single frame. So now that we've talked about opening doors and, you know, interacting with world objects, let's look at how you would set this up to maybe pick up an object and have it attached to the character's hand. So I do already have a socket attached to um, my third person mesh. I just did that off to the side so that way you guys didn't have to watch me mess with the positions. But um, if you don't know how to set up sockets, I will have a video coming out very soon about attaching weapons and how to be able to change equipable weapons. So uh, keep an eye out for that or just look at another uh, tutorial about attaching weapons or creating sockets on a character. Um, so what we're going to do though is I have a flashlight that we can actually use for the purposes of this demonstration. So I'm going to go to my props here. And we're going to kind of do the same thing that we did with the doors. I'm going to create another blueprint. So we're going to go blueprint class and create an actor. And we're going to call it flashlight. All right. And then we're going to go ahead and open this up. And we're going to go to the components tab. And we're going to add a skeletal mesh. And we're going to make sure that that mesh is selected as the flashlight. All right. So now we also want to do is make sure to go to the class settings up here. Add our interface. So go to the add section and just type in interact. Or again, whatever you named your interface. Then we also want to make sure to go to the Skeletal Mesh tab, and we're going to go to the Collision settings on this, and we're going to change the Collision presets to Custom. Now, a couple of things we're going to want to do on this one. Whenever you're attaching something to an actor, there's a couple of things I recommend that's a little different than using, like, doors. First one is going to be make sure to check Query Only, No Physics Collision. The second one is going to be to make sure that Pawn is set to Ignore, because this way it doesn't actually interact with your character weird and start pushing him around. I've had this happen, so this is the reason why I'm saying to do this. Now we also want to make sure to get that interactable object trace channel set to block as well, otherwise we will not be able to pick up the flashlight. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the event graph and we're going to do some quick coding. So if we go to the blueprint, double click on interact, so this way we can get our interaction interface event here. What we're going to do is we're going to pull off and we're going to cast to BP third person character. And this is so that way we can get the appropriate mesh information. So off of object, we're going to just get player character. And then as BP third person character, we're just going to get the mesh. Now what we're going to do off of the BP third person cast fun execution node here, we're going to pull off and we're going to do attach actor to component. So we want to make sure to get this one, attach actor to component. And then we're going to take the mesh and we're going to set it as the parent, leaving the target as self. The socket name that we're going to use is going to be the socket that I created for our uh, for the third person character. So if you don't remember, like for me right now, I honestly am forgetting what I called the socket. So you can always, easy way is I like to go to the animation blueprint by using the finding it in the BP third person character. So then I can just go to the skeleton through this button here. Just makes it easier rather than trying to actually look for it. Uh, but what I can do then is I can just look for hand, and I know I named it hand R socket, I just couldn't remember the capitalization. So we'll control C, and then we'll go back to our flashlight blueprint here, and we'll set that as the socket name. Now we also want to make sure to set the location rule as snap to target on all of these. Alright, so now that we have that set up, what we can do is we can compile and save, and we'll minimize, and we'll go ahead and we'll add that into our scene here. So I'm going to go to props, get our flashlight, and drag it into the world. So now if I hit play, you'll see I've got my trace running. I can walk up to my flashlight, it detects it, and then I press E, and then immediately I've got the flashlight in my hand. And now even with the flashlight in my hand, I can walk up to the door, I can press E, and I can open up the door. Each thing is operating off of its own function, and because of the way the trace is set up, now you can obviously, you know, I would probably recommend messing around with the arrow position just because of the way that the trace is angling, but this just shows you that you can definitely have things that you set up where you interact with one thing one way and one thing another, and neither of them get affected when you interact with the other object.
So that's something to keep in mind is that you can use this for anything, getting into cars, getting into world, anything. Anything that you have running off of that interface um, event is going to run, so which means that you can customize it to each individual interactable character or actor blueprint. But that's it for today's uh, video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please hit that like and subscribe button. Um, always got new videos coming out, so you know when you hit that button, it'll let you know when there's new content coming out, so just a little heads up on that. Now, we're going to be doing the uh, Patreon soon, so keep an eye out for that, guys. This and more will be available on that, um, so keep an eye out. That link will be available uh, if you guys need it, probably within the next week or so. But thank you so much for watching, guys, and as always, stay animated.